Dang it, True Detective, you made me like Vince Vaughn. Good on ya. Hey guys, Jeremy here with my review of the third episode of True Detective. If you're wondering what I'm wearing uh, and why I'm drinking this, well, my downstairs roommate, or downstairs tenant, moved out and he left a bunch of stuff, so... I got this, and we got beer. So, anyway, this episode was actually a really decent episode. The blood is certainly flowing in this episode. There is stuff going on, and we're actually starting to get towards something. If you guys haven't seen my last two reviews, and you haven't seen the last two episodes, don't watch this review because there's just no way I can't talk about what's happened in the last two episodes without revealing some pretty important stuff. So if you haven't, don't watch this. I don't want to ruin it for you. But if you have, let's keep going. So this episode starts off with a really great poetry, sort of like artistic scene with Colin Farrell in what we kind of assume is heaven with this Elvis impersonator singing and his dad sitting across from the table and he's saying, well, what are you doing here? You got here first. And so you're like, wait, wait, what? Is he actually dead? That was the biggest thing about the last episode was no way can he be dead. Well, one, he's top build. And two, he is supposed to be in other episodes. I remember seeing stuff in the trailers and be like, okay, there, I see him there. So what's he doing dead? So when it was revealed that what he was shot by was with riot shells, you're like, oh, shit. All right, so why did they shoot him? Why would you bother to do something like that unless they're a cop? I've been reading a lot of fan theories about what's going on in the season, and one of the ideas, especially from the... <laughs> Kitch, who I will talk about really that idea later. But the one thing I really want to talk about in, for this episode is how good Vince Vaughn was in it. This episode was great. We had been seeing this guy who had been a gangster who was trying to go legit and things were just falling through. None of them were working out. Heck, he couldn't even impregnate his wife. So we're introduced to him in this episode trying to have his wife get him off to try and get his semen into a cup and he just can't take that. It's just, it's unnatural. He says, this isn't who I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be this person of power, but I can't even impregnate my wife. What is wrong with me? And we see him as he goes through the episode, things are just starting to fall apart for him. One of his guys is killed, is the next victim by this killer with the crossed eyes. We don't really, I don't really know who it was who was killed. I immediately thought it was Mopey face who's on his crew. If, seriously, if you guys look, there's a guy. He said in this episode too, he described the Russian mobster as half anaconda, half great white truck. Seems to have this mope face about him all the time. But then when he tries to talk with the other gangsters and he's like, hey, I need your help to figure out what the hell happened to Casper. One of the gangsters who he's dealt with before, this big Mexican guy with gold teeth, just pisses him off. And you know what? He throws down and he pulls out his freaking teeth. Vaughn's character in this episode was purely showing that you can try and leave the game, but the game doesn't leave you. He is starting to realize that he cannot function as a legit person. This won't work unless he does dirty deeds again. But the problem is, he's afraid that these dirty deeds will overcome him and everything he's trying to do legitimate will just fall through with all his criminal activity. So he's at confliction with himself and it's actually really good especially when he goes home at the very end of the episode but then going back to the fan theories of certain characters taylor kitsch mainly one of them was actually that he was gay this episode proved that he actually had affiliations with a soldier when he was back in the army it's pretty awesome that a fan theory is right and as he's starting to ask questions of the prostitutes and he starts going up to the homosexual community you can see he's feeling really nervous he's very uh, tense and he's he can't look at them. That's the thing that I was very interested in. He couldn't look at them. I swear, I think that he's seeing his friend when he looks at them and he's remembering these things. And he's like, no, this is not what I'm supposed to do. But it's this inner confliction with his PTSD, his obvious PTSD. There's a lot of moral dilemma in this episode. And one of the other parts of that is Rachel McAdams basically being told by the police that, yeah, you're not here to find Casper's killer. You're here to find out what Colin Farrell's been up to. And what's actually kind of cool is that she isn't going with her stereotypical sort of feminist hate. She actually is de sort of defending Colin Farrell. And then they find the killer, sort of. They chase him and they almost get him, but then obviously he gets away and she's now faced with even more moral dilemma because Colin Farrell saves her from being hit by a truck. 
But then she, he asks her, what do they have on me? Not only are we getting closer towards who the killer is, but this whole tri trifecta of the cops and their own issues with coming together is really coming to a head. And Vince Vaughn, Vince Vaughn had an awesome episode this episode. This, this was great. If the show keeps this up for the rest, it just became a contender now, in my opinion, for the first season. So for this episode of True Detective, I'm giving it a 5 out of 7. I think it was great. I think it had some... It wasn't like super awesome, but it's definitely getting there. So hopefully we continue this and the next, if I think correct, five episodes will be awesome. So yeah, but if you guys know the fan theories, I'm going to put a link to a thing I saw in the description. Uh, check it out because some of them are pretty cool. Anyway, guys, that's all for me. See you later. Down.